This is Hobie Smith, the Backyard Sportsman, which is my usual wake-up time. I start work at about 2 to 3 and work through the morning and till dawn and then go to bed and sleep for a while and then get up and eat again and start the usual day. As a creative person, I find this my most productive time. I don't have phone interruptions. I don't get these damn robocalls. Now, about the cane and what do you do with it in the house? Well, I keep it by my bed, uh, usually right here on the chair, on, on the table. So that's the first thing I can grasp when I get up. Most people are naturally a bit unsteady when they first wake up and have to make that bathroom run in the dark. Well, you know, we all do this kind of stuff. So, grab your cane and go and proceed and do what you need to do. Uh, you don't want to stumble and fall along the way. When do you know you need a cane? When you find yourself involuntarily and quite commonly grabbing hold of touching objects to keep from falling. And also, when you start sustaining minor injuries to the feet, and I'll show you those in a bit. One of my everyday tasks is doggy avoidance. Uh, when I get up early in the morning, the hound dogs are bedded down, and uh, they frankly don't want to mow. So you use your cane to help you step over such living obstacles. Do you have a table like this at your house? Well, mine is particularly messy because I do several things and not everything the same way the same day. I hunt. I do archery. I do muzzle loading. I do some conventional gun hunting. I cook. I clean. I use vacuum cleaners. I have a vacuum cleaner part right there. And all of this winds up on my kitchen table because mostly I eat by myself. Well, this gets cleaned off several times a year when I have company around holiday season and it's time to get the table cleaned. And you never can tell what might surface when you get into the thing. Uh, <laughs> Well, I find some useful stuff under my piles from time to time. But yeah, uh, these do get mucked out. Uh, what I would say is to help avoid this, finish the task you start and clean up after it. It's difficult when you are a creative person in particular because you'd much rather do creative content than clean house. And, uh, well, that's just the way it is. So it gets messy, and it stays messy a large part of the time. And when I have to, I muck it up. Well, the cane is useful because I can poke things around with it if I have to. I can point to things if I need to. I keep a library and do photography, which was a necessary part of me being a journalist and a writer and an author. Uh, my family were always sort of bookish people. Uh, they were educators, uh, teachers, uh, superintendent of schools, and so on. So it's not unexpected that I grew up with books as well as those I inherited from the family. I've also accumulated a large number of videos, and those I sort of keep here on the library shelves again. Uh, the magazines, I used to keep them, but don't anymore. Uh, I find I never, ever went back and read them again after I'd read them once. Uh, I do keep copies of the stuff I wrote, but uh, the others, yeah, uh, they get tossed out 
not because they don't have valuable content, but because I just don't have the space for them. Many writers these days have multiple computers. And as I've been writing for decades, I've accumulated some that are really no longer supported by anything anywhere. I have some on, uh, one on Excel, for example. And so these are dedicated for different purposes. The ancient ones don't go online anymore, but I still use them for things like oh, screenwriting. For example, in an upper room of my house, which you have sometimes seen on my videos, I have a computer that's dedicated solely to screenwriting, and that's all I do on that instrument. I take the material off it, and when I need to further process it, uh, put it in a, another file, and transfer it to my more modern ones. So far as the cane goes in getting around in the office space, uh, I would like to have you believe that my office is cleaner than anything else. Uh, uh, not so. So are uh, there even more obstacles around on the floor uh, in my office as a rule as there are in the rest of the house? So the cane stays and it's usually hooked on a piece of nearby furniture. And this style of cane is very useful for that purpose. So if you're wondering where to put it, yeah, if you're sitting at a table in a restaurant, yeah, just hook it under the table. That's a good place for it. Keeps it out of everybody's way. Keeps it off the floor. You don't want the waiter stumbling over it for certain. And uh, we will later do another video about working out of motel rooms as well as restaurant facilities and metropolitan areas. Where to keep a cane? Well, if you're an outdoorsy guy like I am, you probably have extra boots. Now, you can buy umbrella stands. Uh, these are porcelain. They're made out of, China, out of China, usually, or India. And yeah, these will hold your canes very well. But for more practical use, uh, I find a, a boot does just as well. So you can stash your cane here right by the door. So you have it as you need to go out and help you with the steps and whatnot. If you're having stability and balance issues, when you're doing something like working at a sink, one helpful hint is actually to approach the sink closely and then take your knees and put them against something. And that way, you have added stability while you use your hands. And you can work with a heavy pot without unstabilizing yourself. Many falls by the elderly are one way or another related to steps. Now, if you happen to live in New York or Chicago and you have the misfortune to live in a tenement that was built in the 1880s and 1890s, these typically have multi-stories and are accessed by stairways. And there were no provisions for elevators in many of them, most of them, unless they were added later. So, what do you do? Well, you got to buy groceries and you got to get them to your apartment. Well, uh, you used to be able to pay a nickel in the 1880s, and any lad on the street would be very happy to haul your groceries up for you. Well, the price has gone up, I'm sorry to say. 
but that's still perhaps the best option. If you live in a house that is two stories, like this old house is, there's 12 steps up to the landing, then to the landing, and another seven steps to the second floor. I do have a stair rail. And so you can carry it with one hand and use the stair rail to balance yourself with the other. And that works reasonably enough. However, when you get to the top, you need a cane. The best solution in that case is to take a cane and stash it at your upper level. That way, you will have it when you get there. A healthy bag of some sort is something that's getting to be harder to come by, but it beats anything I can think of for hauling small objects upstairs. So keep one downstairs and upstairs either way. So if you have to transport, yeah, you've got something a little more handy than trying to handle complexly shaped objects in your hands. And you're also less likely to drop it, which is another problem that we older folks have. Yeah, we tend to drop things. If you live in a big old house like I do, uh, you very likely have a stairwell. Well, you can get bigger things up and down upstairs by actually hoisting them up the stairwell if you hadn't thought of that. And I commonly have moved things like, oh, sheets of plywood, uh, insulation, other big objects up this way by pulling them up from the ground floor. And yes, it's a very expedient thing to do. Now, for smaller things, even a basket will work. So, another option to keep from carrying things upstairs. Well, that's all I have for now concerning the use of a cane in a house. Now, we'll do a later video on using one in the yard. And also, a rather unique thing, a short cane. For now... This is Hovey Smith, reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time.